So is an apple fritter a donut though? Uh, I don't know. Because if it is, we can we can do it. But if it's not, we can't. Does it matter? It, it, yeah, it, yes, it, it's the whole thing. Okay, let me explain. A few months back during a global pandemic and a tripping election cycle, I was thinking, what can't Jeff Bezos buy? And after love and hair, I really looked inwards and realized donuts. All the donuts. Sure, Jeff has 194 billion small ones, which, if this core post is right, is enough to buy every donut that has ever or will ever exist. But any rat with an ounce of class will tell you that combinations of flavors matter. Something new was created. So if you want to get technical, the real question is, can Jeff Bezos buy all the possible combinations of a dozen donuts? And this is a very different question. For example, if you go to Krispy Kreme, there are 40 possible flavors available. But buying donuts individually is like buying a ruler in one-inch installments. Either buy all dozen or freaking guesstimate. We need all 12. And even though there's only 40 possible flavors, there's well over 40 possible combinations of flavors you can use to make a dozen. For example, there's this dozen over here, and that dozen, and oh hey look, that dozen over there. The list goes on and on and on and on, virtually endless. But literally, it does have an end. There's a finite amount of possible combinations of donuts you can use to make a dozen. So the question is, how many combinations are there, and can Jeff Bezos buy all of them? To answer this question, we should start with a simpler problem. And to do that, we gotta go back. Back before Amazon, before Twitter Wars, before Land Before Time 5, back when I was a kid. And I knew two things, coloring books and crayons. Let's say I have my trusty 8-pack with me and want to pull out three crayons to forge my fridge fresco. How many different ways can I pull out the three crayons? Well, let's just do it one at a time. And pulling out the first crayon isn't that interesting. I just have eight options. Either brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, or black. But pulling out the second crayon is where things get interesting. See, in the scenario where the first crown is brown, you have seven options where the second crown could be. All the colors in the pack that aren't brown. And a similar thing happens for each choice of first color. There's always seven options where the second crown pulled could be. So this means there's eight times seven, which equals 56 options total. And picking the third crayon works in the exact same way. There are 56 options where the first and second crayon could be. And in each of those options, you have six choices for what the third crayon can be. All the crayons in the box minus the first two. Thus, looking at all the options, we really have 8 times 7 times 6 ways to pull 3 crayons from a pack of 8. And it always works like this. If we were to pull out 4 crayons, we'd have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 options. Or if we started with 24 crayons, we'd have 24 times 23 times 22 ways to pull out 3. In general, the number of ways to pull m objects from a set of n is just the multiplication of the first m numbers less than or equal to n. But I wasn't born with a gold crown on my adorable baby fingers because it didn't come with my affordable pack. So let's go back to my 8 pack where there are 8 times 7 times 6 which equals 336 ways to pull out 3 crowns. Or is there? I mean it's totally true that there are 336 ways to pull out 3 crowns one by one in order. But in reality when we pull crowns out of a pack, we don't care the order we pull them out in, just which crowns we end up with at the end. So we don't want to count pulling out a red, purple, and yellow crayon as if we're pulling out a purple, yellow, and red for example. Disregarding the order we pull the crayons out in, the number of groups of 3 we can pick from 8 is called the number of combinations of 3 from 8. So the real question is, how many different combinations of 3 crayons can we make from 8? Now this is what mathematicians would refer to as a toughie. Of course though, the answer will depend on how many different ways we can arrange a group of 3. Since like we talked about before, we want to consider every different arrangement of a red, purple, and yellow crayons to represent the same combination. In fact, if you think about it, the number of ways we can pull out three crayons in a particular order just equals the number of combinations of three crayons we can pick from eight, where order doesn't matter, times the number of ways you can arrange a group of three. And oh snap! Then if we divide both sides here, we find that the number of combinations of three crowns from a pack of eight just equals the number of ways to pull out three crayons in order divided by the number of ways to arrange a group of three. And if you're a vocab nut, this number of ways you can arrange a group of objects is called the number of permutations of that group. And here it's easy. All we're asking is how many different ways can you arrange a group of three crayons, like red, purple, and yellow, for instance. Or put another way, how many different ways can you pull out red, purple, and yellow from a pack that just contains red, purple, and yellow? But wait, we already know this! Since there'll be three options for the first crayon in the arrangement, two left for the second, and one left for the third, we know there'll be three times two times one, which equals six possible arrangements, aka permutations. And it always works something like this. There's always m factorial ways to arrange a group of m. But then, don't you see? We've done it! 
We know from our previous formula that the number of combinations of three crowns we can pick from eight just equals the number of ways you can pull out three crowns in order, eight times seven times six, divided by the number of ways you can arrange a group of three, three times two times one, which works out to be 56 total groups of three I could use to forge my masterpiece. Importantly though, like Shaq in a car insurance ad, this result generalizes. Anytime you want to pick m items from a group of n, there are exactly the number of combinations of m from n divided by the number of ways you can arrange a group of m ways to make that choice, which is exactly why we call this number n choose m and write it like this. All right, that was just a kiddie example though. Let's go back to a more adult problem. How many different combinations of a dozen donuts are there? Specifically, let's say you go to my favorite math donut shop, The Poorest Tourist, where there's three flavors, pink, blue, and yellow. You gotta try the yellow. And you want to know how many ways you can make a dozen donuts. First, let's lay out a dozen potential slots. We need to fill each of these slots with a donut to create a valid dozen. So another way to ask this question is, how many ways can you fill these 12 slots with pink, blue, and yellow donuts? And very importantly, keep in mind that just like in the crayons example, the order of these donuts does not matter. All that matters is the number of each donut type we walk away with in the end. So for example, all of these dozens will count as the same combination. Gosh, that last problem is a toughie. This one's a toughie, the vampire slayer. But we're problem solvers. We got this. Let's just start small, right? And that would work if we consider the case of literally just picking one donut. In that case, since we have three donut types to choose from, we have one, two, three options to fill that slot, and therefore three ways to pick one donut. Okay, that was a nice confidence booster. Now let's try to pick two donuts to see if we can do that. Well, if we think about it, we have three ways to fill the first slot, just pink, blue, and yellow. And hey, we also have three ways to fill the second slot, pink, blue, and yellow again. So we should have nine options total, right? Easy. Wrong. Hard. If you actually look at the options, you'll notice that we're blatantly double counting some of these pairs. Like a pink-yellow and a yellow-pink pair shouldn't count as different couples, just as much as Brangelina and a Nad shouldn't both have covers of People's Magazine. Taking out all the extra ones, we're left with just six distinct pairs. But why six? How are we supposed to know beforehand there'd be three repeats? This is a hard problem. See, unlike the crayons example, we can actually choose multiple of the same color donut to make our combination. And this makes things weird. Our normal combination formula does not apply. And how this scales is also a nightmare. Two is hard enough, but imagine going up all the way to 12. Please, I encourage you to pause the video here and try it yourself. Since the order we pick donuts in doesn't matter, we might as well make a convention. We'll always display our donuts with the pink on the left, the blue in the middle, and the yellow on the right. This eliminates all those pesky ways we could possibly double count. So if we only knew how to fill the slots like this, we'd know exactly how many ways we can pick 12 donuts from the poorest torus. And to keep everything in order, we'll use dividers. Which, as weird as it sounds, is actually the key to this whole thing. We'll have two dividers, one to separate the pink from the blue, one to separate the blue from the yellow. And it turns out, any possible way we'll put these dividers down in the slots exactly describes a valid dozen. So the question of how many ways there are to fill these slots entirely comes down to how many ways can we place these dividers. And this is a much easier question. If you think about it, since at the end of the day we want to put down 12 donuts and 2 dividers, we really need 14 slots. 12 normal slots for the donuts, 2 extra slots for the dividers. The problem is we don't know beforehand which 2 slots will be used for the dividers. And that is the problem. Any choice of two slots we use for the dividers will tell us exactly how to make a different unique dozen. So all we have to do is figure out how to choose two slots from 14 slots, and that will exactly tell us how many dozens we can make. But wait a minute, choose. Choose, where is this word for choose? Oh yes, that's right, we've already done this. That's the point of the whole crown crap. The number of ways you can choose two items from 14 items is simply 14 choose two, which we already figured out is just the number of ways you can pull two from 14 divided by two factorial, which here equals 91. Therefore, there are 91 possible dozens you can make at the porous torus. And this technique scales. The porous torus only has three flavors because, you know, keep it simple. But for any donut shop with, say, M flavors, there are exactly 12 plus M minus 1 choose M minus 1 possible combinations of a dozen donuts. So in the case of Krispy Kreme with 40 different flavors, that means there'll be 12 plus 39 choose 39, which equals 158 billion possible dozens you could potentially make. And factoring in that a dozen costs about $8.99, this means it would cost $1.42 trillion to buy every single possible combination of a dozen donuts at Krispy Kreme. Well over the Bezos budget. Let's do some field work. 
All right, so we came to a Krispy Kreme because the idea was with 40 possible flavors of donuts at Krispy Kreme, that leads to 158 billion possible dozens we could buy. Then translating in that there's $8.99 per dozen, that means $1.42 trillion to buy all possible dozens. But there's a bit of an issue, and that is if you look at the donut menu for Krispy Kreme, you see that there's some donuts that are sketchy at best. Like, is an apple fritter a donut, a cinnamon bun? It's a, it's a philosophical question, I think no. So if you take out the pretenders, there's really only 32 possible donuts you can buy, which means there's only 58 possible dozens, or sorry, 58 billion possible dozens you can buy, which translates to only $137 billion to buy all of them, which is well under the Bezos budget. So it all comes down to fritters and buns. Changing the flavor choices you have, even just by a little bit, massively changes the number of possible combinations you can buy. That's how combinatorics works. So, did we find something Jeff Bezos can't buy? Tell us in the comments below. So what's the point of all this? Why don't they give me any excuse to buy these mouth-watering? No, now the point was the math. Yes, of course, the math. And the combinatorics was fun, but really there was a deeper lesson here. Perspective. So the donut problem seemed impossible until we changed our perspective from counting donuts to counting dividers, and then it was easy. This happens all the time in math. Oftentimes an impossible problem will become easy just with a little change of perspective. That's what mathematicians call elegant. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. If you're watching March 14th, happy pie day. We're doing donuts not pie this year, but I would argue that donut has at least two more circles on a pie. That's neither here nor there. The point is, if you liked it, give us a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And hey, comment, tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to see next. I couldn't, I couldn't wait any longer. I have a good one. I really do think that if I bulk up and I film a good video, I could get on The Bachelorette. Because my in would be, my take would be, they've never had like a math professor type person on there. So my take would be that I'm just the guy that doesn't understand what's happening. <laughs> I used to be going around watching two guys argue like a tennis match. Like, you spend all the time with Claire. You spend all the time with Claire. Dude, I, uh, uh. I was just smiling there. Like, what? Why are you smiling? Oh, I'm just happy to be here.